Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Uh, this is the question answer series and hopefully this time it will continue. Um, I will provide the relevant sections uh, for this video so you can skip to the direct to the question because I might just blabber for a couple of minutes uh, since I have made this video after God knows how long. Now, um, organolithiums, as you can see from the title over here, organolithiums, it's it's a very important topic uh, and this particular question that I've come up with today was inspired by gate 2022 exam where there is a there was a question on organolithiums organolithiums in general are very very important reagents and that's why they are very versatile reagents very very important for carbon carbon bond forming reactions and that is why you will see a lot of questions based on this particular concept right so the question over here uh, it's quite simple, but then I have certain advanced topics uh, related to this. Like, for example, you might have heard about lithium halogen exchange or it is very popular. But uh, how many of you have actually heard of lithium sulfur exchange? So that is something interesting that we are also going to be looking at in this particular video. Now, the question is quite simple. If you have a dye substituted uh, pyridine, OK, uh, dibromo substituted pyridine. And to this, let's say I add n-butyl lithium at very low temperatures, OK, around minus 100 degrees Celsius. That's how low generally you add organolithium reagents um, and obviously in inert conditions because as soon as you, you know, uh, key, uh, like if you keep an organolithium compound in air, particularly in butyl lithium, it will, it's pyrophoric, it will automatically catch fire. So. So, the, so N butyl lithium you're adding at minus 100 degrees Celsius. It's it's uh, considered it's uh, in the conditions are inert. And then uh, let's say I add D2O. That means I'm doing I'm going to add deuterium to one of these positions. Okay. And uh, let's say N butyl lithium is in one equivalent. So now you can pause the video and find out what is going to happen over here. What is going to be the product? Okay. So I hope you have got your answer. Now let's look at this. So there are two po possibilities over here. Obviously lithium halogen exchange is going to happen. And uh, the, one of the bromines is going to be exchanged if you are adding one equivalent of this N-butyl lithium. So where is going the lithium going to attach? That is the first thing. And once you've figured out that where the lithium is going to attach, then if you're adding D2O, simply D2O will replace the lithium and you will have the deuterium attached over there, right? So uh, the question is quite straightforward. Now we need to figure out which one of the two is going to be replaced. So let me draw the correct answer over here first, and then we can discuss why that particular answer is correct. So the answer for this question would be a replacement at the fifth position. Okay, so we'll have deuterium over here and bromide over here. So this is going to be our answer. That means this particular bromine over here is going to be undergoing lithium halogen exchange. Now the question is that why? So if you look at the uh, if you if you look at the molecule over here, you can think of two ways why the lithium halogen exchange could happen over here. First is that the nitrogen over here has here has lone pairs, so the you know so the lithium could you know chelate, and that's why you would think that lithium halogen exchange might happen over here. And the second thing also, which is very important, is that once the lithium like once uh, the uh, lithium halogen exchange takes place, you can see that the nitrogen over here is more electronegative, right? So, so if, if we have a carbon lithium bond, if you imagine over here, instead of bromine, if you have a carbon lithium bond, instead of bromine, if you have a carbon lithium bond, then basically the negative charge resides on this particular carbon, right? And you have an electronegative atom over here. So the electronegative atom will basically pull the electrons and stabilize the negative charge over here. So if you think of it from these two perspectives, then you might, uh, you know, uh, you might have answered that, okay, the lithium halogen exchange will take place over here. And subsequently, the deuterium will also attach over here. But that is not the case. Now, the reason for that is quite interesting. That is that the night uh, that in this particular case, even though we have minus 100 degrees Celsius temperature, uh, the still the thermodynamic product is more favored. Okay, still the thermodynamic product is more favored. So that is quite startling. And uh, I'll give you the reference to that article. So this is the article which talks about the lithium halogen exchange. It's a very old article ba way back in 1977. So you can see this uh, if you're interested later on. Uh, but here the thermodynamic product is favored. So you might know that at low temperatures and particularly if you talk about organolithiums, uh, a very um, 
uh, kinetic products are very dominant in organic lithiums particularly because you are uh, doing the reaction at low temperatures so this is one sort of exception where you have the thermodynamic product formed and the reason for that is that these lone pair of electrons on this nitrogen okay the nitrogen will have two lone pair of electrons um and these lo- two or one uh, one sorry <laughs> sorry yeah so it will have a lo- uh, it will have two electrons or one lone pair of electrons and uh, now what is going to happen over here is that this lone pair is going to repel okay so it will cause a very strong repulsion because of which the two if 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 i substitute if i basically draw the product over here if, we, if the lithium exchange takes place at the second position so at this position so the lone pair over here is going to repel uh, this uh, formation or basically it is going to destabilize the formation of this uh, lithium at the second position okay so that this uh, bond of the uh, carbon and lithium at the second position it's going to be destabilized because of this lone pair of electrons and one particular reason why that is the case is because they are coplanar in nature okay this this lone pair and this carbon lithium bond that is formed that is coplanar that is they are existing in the same plane for example if you talk about uh, cases where the chelation takes place like there are two examples as you can see over here this one and this one in in the first case in the first case if you see this nitrogen over here okay the lone pair of electrons are they are not in the same plane as the carbon lithium okay they are in, in they are in a different plane okay similarly if we see over here um in this case as well uh when the uh, ortho lithiation takes place or the lithium gets attached over here due to the chelation with this nitrogen again you can see that the nitrogen lone pair and the lithium they are orthogonal to each other okay they are not in the same plane they are orthogonal to each other so because of these uh, because in this in these cases it is orthogonal but in this case the case that we are discussing in this case it is coplanar so because of this coplan- coplanarity this gets destabilized and that is why in this case the thermodynamic product is favored and this turns out to be more stable thermodynamically okay so if you talk about a thermodynamic product this is more stable so even at a very low temperatures this is a very good example of when a thermodynamic product is favored even at lower temperatures so in this case your this product is favored and that is why when you add d2 o over here you get this particular product okay so this is our answer now uh like i was saying this was an example of lithium halogen exchange then there's something which is very important which i have not seen a question in either csir or gate and that's why i thought i'll just discuss it with it you discuss it with you briefly that is the sulfur lithium exchange okay so if you want to read more about it this is the reference article uh, you can go ahead and read uh, on uh, sulfur lithium exchange that what is the exact mechanism okay so you might have seen such questions very similar questions and you know about this ability of butyl lithium to uh, you know abstract the alpha hydrogen like uh, hydrogen which is attached to the alpha carbon for example like um, you might have seen this example very frequently that we have this uh, like this group and then you add butyl lithium for example so then or 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 something like this uh, wait i'll just draw it over here something like this that we have um sph and sph over here and then there are two hydrogens and to this if you add butyl lithium uh, it could be n butyl lithium secondary butyl tertiary butyl lithium it will abstract one of these protons okay so this is your basically abstraction which is uh, something that many of you might have studied but there's also a possibility of a lithium hal- halogen exchange so lithium sulfur exchange uh, particularly these thio thiophenyls okay so this sph that is sulfur attached to a phenyl that can be called as a thiophenyl okay thiophenyl esters so this thiophenyl group or thioester sorry not thiophenyl thioesters okay thiophenyl esters whatever the nomenclature is i hope you got the point now in this case something very interesting happens try and figure out what exactly might happen okay you can pause the video obviously I, i'm going to tell you the answer and one small thing that i want to tell you is that this reagent over here this is called as uh, lithium di to di butyl uh, biphenyl okay so this is the structure you can see two tertiary butyl groups over here this is one tertiary butyl group so di tertiary butyl biphenyl okay so lithium di tertiary butyl biphenyl group okay this is another reagent we can see it's a radical anion okay it's a radical anion that means this is it has a radical and a negative charge so it's a radical anion that is generated and then we are adding co2 
so try and see what product might be formed over here so again i hope that you have tried your best uh, to find out what might happen now like i said sulfur if if you were smart enough you might have got the hint that i am talking about sulfur lithium exchange so this ldbb reagent okay this is as you can see it it does not act as a base rather it basically goes through it undergoes an exchange reaction with this uh, mm, thiophenyl ester okay and uh, thioester sorry or whatever it might be like you got it right i i'm i'm very sorry i am very poor with the nomenclature so anyway uh, this group gets uh, removed okay uh, basically it, it follows a radical mechanism again like i said if you want to uh, go through the mechanism you can uh, it's it's not very difficult it's straight forward but then it will make the video unnecessarily lengthy and that's why i was not going through the mechanism but it's 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 straight forward mechanism you can even google about sulfur lithium exchange mechanism okay so it goes through a radical mechanism and so basically the lithium gets attached over here now now also something very interesting happens because organ lithiums they are very very you know it's very difficult to predict products uh, even for scientists who are trying new reactions um, because they undergo a lot of rearrangement reactions so over here now what is going to happen is a rearrangement reaction is going to take place that means uh, so for for the time being what i'm going to do is i will remove this lithium okay and let's consider this as a negative charge over here for the time being okay so let's consider this as a negative charge and uh, and now what happens is this undergoes a cyclization reaction okay so the temperature is low so it undergoes this kind of cyclization reaction obviously a three membered ring is going to be formed and then this will attach to the lithium that was coordinated to this side so there was a lithium coordinated over here so this will attach to this lithium so what we are going to get we are going to get a three membered ring like this okay and uh, and then we have ch2 and then we have lithium now again something very interesting happens this is called as a beta carbon elimination so again now what is going to happen this uh, let me use some other pen yeah so this migrates over here and this bond breaks out okay this bond over here breaks out so uh, this is this is the sort of migration that is going to happen and uh, so what will be the product in this case so we will have this 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 so this remains the ring remains intact so you can see this bond over here gets broken okay so this migrates over here and this bond gets broken so at one end we are going to have ch2 and then when the minus charge comes over here this lithium gets attached over there right so you can see this will this bond will get broken ch2 minus and then to that lithium is going to get attached and over here we'll have this ch2 and then a double bond so we'll have like this okay and next what is going to happen is that when you add the co2 over here simply you you know what is going to happen when you add co2 group so co2 group uh, it i this my face might be covering it so i'm drawing over here so this is my co2 group so this is my nucleophile okay this i can also denote as a nucleophile a powerpoint is actually quite bad for drawing structures actually anyway so this i can denote as a nucleophile this is going to attack this carbon and basically we'll get a carboxylic group over here so what is my final structure going to be i hope i am not covering it but this is going to be my final product i'll draw it again over here this is my final product fp and again draw over here just in case if i'm covering it i can't see myself so it will be difficult for me to so this is going to be my final product okay and again the the reference to this particular reaction is this this was published in journal of american chemical society a very popular journal called jax anyway if you watch this video till the end and like this video do give it a big thumbs up and also please comment for this time only you don't have to comment in every video but do comment on this video because i'm starting out after a very long time and if this these kind of videos did help you um your comments will definitely motivate me so thank you so much for watching i'll see you in the next video